Welcome everyone to the DBA Fundamentals chapter. Uh, today we're going to have Eric Darling with What Else Can Index Do For Me? Um, this uh, chapter is run by Steve Cantrell and includes myself, Warwick, Kevin and Glenda. You should be able to see our information up there on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, please join. It's great for help, networking and just staying in touch with SQL community. And on the bottom right there, you should be able to see all our resources for the various uh, websites, YouTube, and Twitter and Slack. A uh, quick word about our sponsors. We're sponsored by Century One. You may have heard of them. They have great helpful articles on SQL performance. They have a uh, great query tuning device on answers.sql performance. And they have uh, CenturyOne.com Plan Explorer, which is a free tool for um, examining your execution plans. We're also sponsored by DB Watch, which is a great tool to monitor your various platforms and databases from SQL Server, Oracle, and all the rest. Um, quick talk about other past virtual groups. Uh, these are broken out by language and by technology. You've got Chinese, Portuguese, Spanish, PowerShell, professional development, DevOps, and of course ourselves, DBA Fundamentals. Here you have a quick list of the upcoming virtual chapters, um, the virtual groups like DevOps Cloud, the meet and dates and times, and also the website links. So you can go on there, check them out, and maybe sign up for one if it seems yeah, interesting to you. Uh, upcoming SQL Saturdays. If you do get a chance, please check out any of these. They're a great day of free training where you can learn, you can network, you can get exposed to different technologies and go back and figure them out. And also a way to just see what's up and coming in this data community. And finally, uh, in case you're unaware, Past Summit is coming up this November from the 5th to the 8th. It is probably the conference for SQL Server and Data Professionals community. Um, this is our code for a $150 discount off the full price of a pass ticket. Um, so please don't be shy, don't be afraid, just grab that code, put it in and get the discount off. Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna hand you over to Eric and uh, best of luck. That's the luck. So if yeah, I'm that's a skilled, luck. Is it as, as if I'm not a skilled professional? <laughs> I don't need luck. <laughs> Just kidding. This is mostly luck. Is it, I'm not gonna lie. This is mostly luck. Like, like right now, I can't see my mouse cursor. So who, who knows? Who knows what I'm gonna click on? Show my demo VM. There we go. All right. Can everyone see my demo VM now? We can see like the. The, 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 the cheesy logo with the weight and everything. I like the logo, but yes, we can see it. Yeah. You can see it. All right. Fine. All right. Cool. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric. I am uh, an independent consultant, so they say. Uh, before that, I worked for some guy you have absolutely never heard of, and I had some terribly boring DBA jobs. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I have two main ways of you doing that. Uh, one is my email address, Eric at Eric Garland Data. And uh, uh, on Twitter, I am also Eric Garland Data. I, I put my name in everything so that uh, you don't forget who gave you the wrong answer. Uh, but anyway, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If, it's, if, you, if you send me a question, just make sure you let me know that you are uh, in this uh, webinar so that I don't just send you to spam because I get a lot of weird questions. Let's see, it's right. I'm just like, when does this work? I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> hire me. Fire me, then fire me. Uh, so we, we are here today to talk about indexes, and indexes are absolutely one of my favorite things, but not from the perspective of like, like they look like a phone book, and this is how SQL Server finds it. Because let's face it, no one's no one's had one of these in a while. Everyone thinks about phone books now. They just go to Google or Bing or whatever. I want this talk to age reasonably well, so I'm not going to talk about phone books. I'm also not going to talk about this at all because. In all the years that I've been performance tuning things, knowing what this looks like has just never really helped me. This has never really been something that I've been like, oh, but the page header was weird. That's why it never happened. I've also never really thought much about this. I mean, it's nice to know. It's nice to like. It's nice to realize that SQL Server is not just one big Excel file or like one big notepad file with everything that's kind of scribbled down in it. But but knowing what a, a, an index looked like, a B tree looks like, it's just sort of academics, never really been like the, the, the crux of a performance issue that I've run into. I'm also not here to give you any, you know, stock internet advice, right? This is not, this is not an internet advice generator where you can, you can throw whatever meme you want or whatever picture you want. If your clustered index is on a GUID, 
you know, most of the time, I'm just I'm just happy if I see that there's a there's a clustered index involved. Most of the time, like that's enough for me. If it's on a GUID, we can we can we can talk about that later. But I'm usually I'm just happy to see that one exists. If you don't rebuild your indexes every single night, you know, I'm actually on your team. <laughs> I'm on your team if you don't do that. You picked a good thing to not do. If you don't always put the, put the most selective column is the first column in the index, that's that's fine with me. I mean, at least you're, you're trying, you're, you're making indexes, you're trying to fix things. If you've got page splits, you know what? That's a good thing. Page splits are, are a positive thing. Page splits mean that you have data coming in, and when you have data coming in, that means you have customers, and when you have customers, that means you get to make money and keep your job. If any of you would like to come split my pages, you are more than welcome to. You can go to my website, you can hire me. It's awesome, it's an awesome experience for anyone. If your indexes don't have like the best naming convention in the world, right? If you're, you're not sitting there like fastidiously typing out every single column name that you're putting in the index and the table name and the type of index it is and all that, that's cool. Just you know, keep plugging. <laughs> we'll take. Well, we, you can rename things later pretty easily. What you really want to focus on is is getting the right indexes in place. Names are less important. You can name your indexes whatever you want. It doesn't bother me. What I do care about is that you start making index tuning part of query tuning. Over and over again, I, I'll hear something like joins are slow, group buy is slow order by is slow, or something is always slow, SQL Server sucks, it's the worst database, go get Oracle, let's go get Postgres, go get something else, SQL Server is terrible. But people have just not created the right indexes to kind of help any activity they're doing, and any database platform that you use is kind of going to suck without the right indexes. And it, kind of, and it seems to me like the only time people ever get riled up about indexes is when they look at that query plan, they're like, oh, there's a scan. And they just, they're like, this query is just doomed. This is never going to be fast. This, this query is a Titanic. This is the worst query ever that scanned the index. What, this thing doesn't see, this query is never going to be fast. That's the only time people get worked up about it. And there's so many other things that indexes are very good at fixing and solving problems for. So what I'm going to show you today are some obvious, and then some not so obvious things that indexes can change in near about around next to sometimes inside of your query points. So let's go do some demos because uh, I, I hate slides. <laughs> be honest with you, I, I hate slides. Uh, so all of these uh, things that I'm going to show you today, uh, both the demo database and the uh, demo scripts are available at these bit.ly links. They are case sensitive as I found out on many occasions. So if you type in something without the right casing and you download something, it may not be from me. Whatever you download is on you. That is not my issue. Just make sure you type things the right way. Take a screenshot or something. So we're going to turn on query plan. I already did. What a pro. What a pro. And I make sure I make sure I run this because we're going to start we're going to start off on the right foot here. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is joins and what type of joins are appropriate for like uh, for certain queries. So let's look at this query, right? And right now, before I run this, the ID column of the users table, right? So this one right here, that's already the primary key clustered index. What we're looking at is the owner user ID of the post table, right? So we have to join together on that, but right now there's no index on owner user ID. So when I run this query, it's not really the fastest thing in the world. It's, it's actually pretty slow. And, and it's bizarrely slow and it's a strange, uh, choice of join because the only rows that only 410 rows come out of the user's table. But so, for some reason, SQL Server said, no, 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 410 rows, that's a lot of rows. We're going to do a hash join. We're going to build a bitmap. We're going to scan the entire post table for four, to, to, to join 410 rows over here. And that's that's kind of, kind of a strange choice. Now, if we Obviously, right? But this is not a good realistic index because it's not really a good realistic real world query. It's just like a count query. So we're only going to index one column over in the post table. But if we if we do that, then all of a sudden this query is going to change pretty significantly. It's going to be a lot faster too. So the kind of obvious thing here is that if you index your join columns, you can 
get different execution plans and you can get SQL Server to start thinking about different types of joins that are more appropriate for the amount of data that you're querying. So now those 410 rows, for everyone that comes out of the users table, we just go seek into the post table and we go find that owner user ID pretty quickly, which is great. That's a great efficient strategy. Without that index though, hash join really is the only appropriate strategy. If we went with a merge join, merge join needs sorted input on both sides. The index on the ID table, on the, on the ID table, on the users table, on the ID column puts that data in order. Over in the post table, the clustered index is on another column called ID. It's not on owner user ID, so owner user ID is just completely out of order. A merge join would mean that we would have to sort the entire post table in order to use a merge join and join it to the users table. If we did a nested loops join without that index, we would have had to scan the entire post table 410 times. Neither one of those is a great idea. So having the right indexes in place can make your joins a little bit better. Are there any questions over in chat about, uh, about that demo or anything else? Doesn't look like it. All right. One general question about the deck, the video availability. I'll let someone from uh, from from maintenance answer that. Sorry, Shane. Uh, anyway, uh, next up, we're going to talk about index pools. Now, index pools for years, I would see them in query plans, and I'd be like, "What's hmm, the worst that could happen? Index pool? I don't know. It's pulled an index. I don't know what does that mean?" And then, when I, and then, like, I started digging into them, and I started to get more and more aggravated with them, and especially when I saw them. Now. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at this query where I select the top 38, uh, display name, yada yada from users, and I just want you to get a, a, take a glimpse at the, at the execution plan, get a general feel for the shape of that thing. We, 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 we take uh, everything from this side and we sort it and we nest the loop join and we come over here and we sort it and that's the general shape of the plan. I'm just not, this plan is neither good nor bad. And if I run it, it, it's fairly quick too. This isn't like a, a terribly slow, long-running query. At least it wasn't before. Now that now that I'm in front of you, it'll run dog slow, and who knows what will happen, right? It's my luck. So nine seconds, not the greatest thing in the world, but this is what the query plan looks like. Right? We, can, we can agree that this is this is the query plan, and that, and that it took nine seconds to run. If I take change this to the top 39 rows from the users table, all of a sudden this is going to go a whole lot worse. This will go, and this will run for, oh, I don't know, around about 30 seconds. Anyone have any questions? Shane, how was your night? Or how was your night shaping up? My night is going amazing. Amazing? Yeah, what are you up to? Amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm going to relax and study. You're going to relax and study. What are you relaxing and studying, Shane? Uh, indexing, of course. Indexing. Indexing. What a great thing to study on. a Is it Tuesday there? How did you know? I guessed. I've seen I've seen okay. a calendar once or twice. My vitamin case told me it was Tuesday. That's how <laughs> I'm actually getting on a plane tonight. I'm going to I'm flying into Scotland tonight. Or flying into Manchester, then to Scotland. So I don't know, maybe I'll maybe I'll pass over you but I'm in the airplane back. <laughs> Thank hey, you very much for that. You're welcome anytime. So this the query plan changed a little bit here, right? It ran for thirty three seconds rather than nine seconds. And what's different about this plan is now rather than just taking this index and sorting it and joining it, now we have an eager index spool sitting right in here. So SQL Server, what SQL Server is, was it, and this is where this is where we spent all that time. You can see that the scan of the badges table only took 1.6 seconds, and then creating this index took 32 seconds. And so that's that's not a very that's not a good performance improvement. This is not. We, are, we have not improved the performance of this query. But what, C, what SQL Server did was it said, I don't want to do that 39 times. I don't want to go do that. I'm going to build an index to make this easier. If you look at what, how the index gets built, it's, this plan is lying to us. This, this plan has lied previously to us. If we hit F4 and we go look at the properties of this index scan, we can see that all those rows, all 8 million rows from the badges table, ended up on one thread. So we built an 8 million row index on a single thread. That's very, very slow. No wonder this thing took 30 seconds, 30, 32.8 seconds. So nearly 33 seconds doing that. 
okay, fine. And so we built that index. And if we look at the, the, the properties of the index pool, we can get a feeling for, we can get a, we can get a fact for uh, what index SQL Server created for us. What SQL Server took 8 million rows, stuck in 10 DB and indexed for us. We, we can figure that out. So if we look at the C predicates, we can think of those like the key of the index. And if we look at the output list, we can think of those as like included columns of the index. Sometimes you'll see some overlap there, but if something is, you see something sitting down in the seat keys, that's where you want to think about as key columns, then the output list will be like included columns, right? So we're pretty good there. And what's nice is that if we if we think about it, we create that index, right, on, on the badges table on, on user ID, and we include the date display name, just like just like the eager index tool told us. Well, this isn't going to take 32 seconds to create. That takes four seconds to create. Now, SQL Server didn't ask for this index. There was no missing index request there. SQL Server wasn't like, hey, friend, hey, pal, PDA pal, can you maybe help me out with this? No, every single time that query ran, it was gonna spend 32.831 seconds building that index, then throwing it away. We make that index though, we create that index, and all of a sudden, this query doesn't need 33 seconds, it needs approximately zero seconds to run. So, with that, and now SQL Server is asking for a different index. It's like, oh, well, we'll take this other one. So this query that takes 300 milliseconds really needs an index. The query that took 33 seconds didn't need an index. No, forget that. We'll create one on our own. We'll, think, we'll just go do that, all right? Thanks, SQL, thanks, you're a, you're a real friend. Real friend. Are there any questions on the uh, index? Demo. Oh, all right, cool. So next we're going to talk about table spools. This is a different kind of spool that happens in SQL Server. Now an index spool happens uh, where you know SQL Server takes all the data and spools it into an index structure in TempDB. A table spool is just like a heap. There's no index involved whatsoever. I'm going to create a couple indexes to make this demo move a little bit more quickly, uh, and then we'll take a look at how SQL Server deals with uh, index spools. Which, is, which are all nearly nearly as, as awful as index, index spools. Spools in general can, tend to irk me. I don't know if you've picked that up about me yet. So what we're going to do now is we're going. I'm going to show you why SQL Server is worth seven thousand dollars a core. I mean, this is developer edition, so it's worth zero dollars a core. We're going to show you why SQL Server is worth seven thousand dollars a core for enterprise edition. Look how fast I can create a temp table. <sighs> Spectacular performance. Shane, you ever seen that? Not that fast. No, that's crazy, right? Yeah. That's why. It's, I mean, look at look at the milliseconds on that zero to create to create a ten team. Wow. Put, put that in the pamphlet. Buddy. Marketing department's failing. Not telling you about that. I can look at look how fast I can do that. It's nuts. Nuts how fast you can create a ten team. Let's stick some data in there. Let's dump some data in. This will also be fast. I don't want anyone to think that this is this is the slow part. That's the fast part. We put a whole bunch of rows in there. We put, let's count them, 243,205 rows in that temp table in zero seconds. Bam. Now we're going to query that temp table. Now we're going to see what happens when we take the people in that temp table and we and we start looking at how they how they did. And this is this is not going to be fun for us either. This is is another very slow spool. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. 17 seconds to get 40,000 rows. That's not a very good row to second ratio. If you if you do the math on that, if you if you take your calculator, you put it put it in advanced mode, and you divide that up, you'll see that that was not a very efficient query. Spending 17 seconds to get 40,000 rows. That's not good. In the query plan, if we go and look at this, we can we can see we can see things start to add up as we go across here. So that took 243 seconds and then that took, well, this, this is cumulative going across. So that's, a, a, you know, we're up to about 800 milliseconds there and 850 there and we're, we're still under a second here, but, but then we hit 10 seconds here. And then, and then this nested loops join, well, this, this takes a while too. And then this, this, this filter takes a while too. This is, this is a very slow plan. We're starting to, we're starting to see why this didn't move so quickly. So what SQL Server did, why SQL Server did it, is 
when SQL Server thinks that it's going to have to do repetitive work, which it, it was going to here because this is a nested loops joint. Anything that happens on the inner side of nested loops is going to happen once for everything that comes out of this side. And so SQL Server looks at this temp table with 243,000 rows in it, and it says, I bet there's a lot of duplicate values in here. I bet, I bet there are duplicates in here, and I don't want to do more work for every duplicate value. For example, if I get the number one once, fine, that's easy. If I get the number one 10 times, well, why would I go get the same data 10 times? So what SQL Server does is it takes a, it takes a, it uses a lazy spool, and when the number one comes, it goes and fetches all the, all the data for number one, and we call that a rebind. So if we look at the properties here, we can see that there are 40,000 rebinds. That means that there were 40,000 unique values in the temp table. If we look at rewinds, that means SQL Server reused data inside of that spool. That means that there were 202,000 duplicate values in that temp table. All in all, that adds up to exactly the number of rows in the temp table. But what's crazy is for those 200,000 rows, we end up spooling about 10 million rows through that spool. Hmm. That's pretty funny because the entire table that we're looking at is only about 17 million rows. So, uh, confusing. Why, why are we doing all that extra work? Why are we spooling data? How can we fix it? How can we, how can we make this better? Well, the way that I like to do it is to tell SQL Server that our data is unique and to only put unique data in the table, right? Because we had, we had apparently 202,000 duplicate values in there. So let's see how this changes. So we're gonna, we're gonna run this section again. So I wanna show you how fast creating a temp table is. And I wanna show you how fast putting data in a temp table is, even, even with an index on it. That's still fast, right? That's not slowing us down any. That was, that, was, that was quick. And now we have a unique set of data and a unique index on that table. And now when we run this query, we no longer have to spool data. SQL Server is not worried about doing duplicate work. And our nested loops join works a whole lot better. So now with that, with having a clustered index here and have, telling SQL Server that it's unique and only putting unique rows in, we get rid of SQL Server's sort of paranoia about doing a bunch of repetitive work because it knows that it's only going to have to do each thing once, right? We're not going to have 200,000 duplicate rows there. We only had our 40,000 unique values. We have no spool. We use less memory. Everything is generally in an overall happier place. All right. It looks like there's a question over in chat. Uh, is it typically good practice to create a new index based on the seek predicate and output list of an index pool, or does it depend? So generally, yes, unless you have an index that's close by in definition. Um, SQL Server may choose to use, uh, uh, it doesn't have to use the clustered index. Sometimes it might use uh, a non-clustered index that just happens to have the columns in it, just not in the ideal order that it wants. So sometimes you can alter an existing index to satisfy an index pool. But you got to be a little bit careful with that, just in case you know. If SQL Server is really fond of that index for other thing, other reasons, then you don't want to slow down other queries. So you know, it does depend a little bit. Sometimes you do have to add the new index. Other times you can alter an existing index. SQL Server is not going and checking your uh, existing indexes and saying, well, you know, if you just change this one a little bit, we could really help things out. It's just saying, I just I just give me a new one, right? SQL Server didn't go and ask for one. It just created one and said, I need a new index. I'm not going to ask. All right, so let's go and look at something else. Let's go and look at source. Now, everyone, everyone has heard the sage advice to never sort in SQL Server, to only sort in, uh, in the application. Now, this is one other question here. Is there a point at which the benefit of the select distinct outweighs the disadvantages of the table spool? Yeah, if, it, <laughs> if, if inserting distinct data into the temp table takes longer than the court than the plan with the school, then yeah, that's where it, that's where it all fades. But uh, and I've, I've I've not run into that situation um, yet. Yeah, I would love to run into that situation. I would love to someday say, but in this one case, something terrible happened. But so far, so far, getting the distinct data into a temp table has been uh, much faster than doing the uh, doing it the opposite way and letting SQL Server 
Let's do this. Anyway, we're going to talk about sorts because sorts, when they happen in query plans, they require memory, right? Precious memory that you probably don't have enough of anyway, and that you're probably, uh, you know, not caching enough of your uh, SQL Server data in memory, and now queries are coming along and they're saying, I need memory too. And you're saying, well, where is it going to come from? And the plan cache looks around and says, okay, fine, and the plan cache disappears. And then we look at the buffer pool, and the buffer pool is like, fine, you can have some, and it pushes a bunch of pages out of the cache. And then your query is like, cool, thanks. I got my memory, I'm going to run. Sorts and hashes both require memory, but sorts ask for a ton more memory than hashes want. So we care about them because they ask for memory, because they're internally blocking. They're not blocking other queries. What they're doing is that when you see a sort operator, all the rows coming into that sort operator have to get there before a SQL Server can take break out its tiny little baby hands and start sorting that data. If you don't get enough memory, a sort might spill the disk. And you know, just generally there's a lot of weird stuff about sorts that you know make me kind of focus on that. And the and the query that one day I was trying to tune. I was trying to tune a query, and I created an index that uh, looked like this. And the, the query was a little bit more complicated, I promise. It, it, was, it was slightly more complicated than this. That's why I needed tuning. But I created this index right, on owner user ID and score because I'm joining on owner user ID and I'm ordering by score. I, I really thought that SQL Server would come up with a very good plan for this query, but it didn't. It came up with the worst possible plan that I could have imagined for this query. The worst. It took the big table, right? The, well, the bigger table, right? The post table is much bigger than the user's table. Users is like one user per person, and then over on posts is a whole bunch of questions and answers per user. So it's a, a one-to-many relationship, and the post table is much larger. We took the post table, and we sorted the entire thing. We, we spilled a little bit out to disk. Right, not a lot. We spilled a little bit out to disk. It's like we took the big table, sorted it on the outer side of nested loops, then the inner side, the, the little table, and it's just like everything about this was offensive to me. Because this, what the plan that I want, what I wanted the plan to look like was when, when I when I did this. This was the plan that I was after. Right, this was this. That's about 500 milliseconds faster. The plan that I was after was one where the users table is on the outside. Right, the the one of the one to many relationship is on the outside. And on the, the inside, we just go and find one for every user, and then we sort over here, and then we, we, we return data over there. And I was like, why, why didn't you pick that? And I was very confused. And this is also when I fell in love with cross-apply. It was a simultaneous thing. Right? I started hating sorts and loving cross-apply at the same time. It was a wonderful day. Many things changed. I grew a beard, uh, sobered up a little. Anyway. The reason why I thought SQL Server would choose that plan based on the index I created is because when you create an index on multiple columns, then the data is sorted by those columns in order. So if we create an index uh, on the users table, first on reputation, then upvotes, then downvotes, then creation date, the index is in order by reputation, and then if there are any duplicates in reputation, we're in order by upvotes within those duplicates, and then for duplicates and upvotes, we're ordered by downvotes, and then for duplicates and downvotes, we're ordered by creation date. Right? So it's nicely ordered when you have all those columns going across, and I really thought that, well, SQL Server has this ordered by owner user ID score is right there. Why do we need to sort these? Because when I look at these two queries, right, remember upvotes is the second column in that index, right? And when we run, if we run this query where we just say order by upvotes, or if we run this query where we say where reputation equals one order by upvotes, we get two different execution plans. They're both pretty quick. I'm not trying to drag it down with this, but what I just want to show you the difference is that when SQL Server needed to order data by that second column, we couldn't do it initially, right? We couldn't, we didn't have data in that order. But when we looked for reputation equals one, Right, so reputation is the first column in the index. We didn't need to sort data after that because the data was already in order for us. So for reputation equals one, we had all of that upvote data in order next. Right, if you if we look at the query results, that kind of makes sense. Reputation equals one, 
of votes equal zero, we already have our data ordered by this column because we already had data in order by this column. We didn't have to worry about anything else. And this is true across the entire index. If I look for reputation equals one and upvotes equals zero and downvotes equals zero, I can order by creation date without needing to sort any data. There's no sort operator in here. We have that data in index order. So that's pretty cool, right? That's a nice thing to know about indexes. Where that kind of follow parts though, follow, falls apart though, <laughs> it's gonna be a fun morning, is uh, with inequality. So with equalities, everything is cool. With inequalities, well, SQL Server is a little bit less confident about the order of things. So uh, we go back to needing to sort that data, unfortunately. So for equalities, we're cool with inequalities, we're not so cool. Anyway, what this brings me to is that the typical index tuning advice is that you want to index for equality predicates first, right? So anything that's after an equal sign. And then inequality pre second, uh, predicates second. So greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, not equal to, but those second. And then if you, any columns that you're just selecting can go in the, included, in the list of included columns. I think that a lot of times, especially if you're asking for data in any particular order, then maybe you should think about putting your equality columns first, so that stays the same. Any columns you're sorting by second to avoid needing to order data, then inequality columns, because you're gonna have to scan that part of the index anyway, and then any columns you're selecting can just be included. So that's what I think the advice should be. Maybe it'll catch on, maybe it won't. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe someday. I, I can hope, I can hope and pray. Uh, let's see, Abdel says, what are your thoughts on using table variables instead of temp tables? Uh, unrelated, but uh, I, I prefer temp tables in 99 point, basically infinite nine uh, percent of circumstances. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about with SQL Server is memory. Memory is, again, crucially important to your SQL Server because when uh, SQL Server doesn't have enough memory, then you end up spending a lot of time reading from the disk, and when queries don't get enough memory, they spend a lot of time spilling the disk, and just a lot of stuff goes wrong when you don't have enough memory or when you're not using memory wisely in your SQL Server. So let's look at this query right here. This query is uh, going to hit the comments table, generate a row number over user ID, uh, partition by user ID and order by score, and then we come outside there and we do a little jump, right? No, no, not too bad, nothing too weird or wild going on there. I'm gonna use something called OStress so I can run multiple copies of this query at once. I'm also going to use a stored procedure that I wrote called Quick Grant Info. And quick grant info is going to give us some information. Uh, it's not going to be too too fun right here because uh, we're not looking at anything running, so there's no data up here. But down here, we get some information back about SQL Server and, and how much memory it has and how much memory it can give up. We can see that we have uh, uh, this this instance of SQL Server has about 50 gigs of memory assigned to it. This is my laptop. Laptop's got 64 gigs. This SQL Server instance has uh, 50 gigs assigned to it. For the for query memory, I can give out 37 gigs of my 50 gigs. It's a lot of gigs, right? It's a lot of memory potentially <laughs> taken away from the buffer pool for uh, for queries to run. Right now, I've got all 37 of those gigs available. I haven't granted any. I haven't used any, and there's really not a whole lot of information over here. If I go and I run nine copies of this query that's going to want about 3.7 gigs of memory to run. Let's go and run this and we'll go over here and we'll paste that in and we'll kick that off and I'm just going to get this info and then kill things because I don't want uh, I don't want your experience to suffer on the other end. Sometimes when I run these crazy demos where I use a lot of resources uh, the, the web audio video starts to get a little I killed that pretty quick. But what I want to show you is that we had nine copies of that query running, right? Rows one through nine. Nine copies of that ran. They all asked for 3.7 gigs of memory, and they all got 3.7 gigs of memory. They didn't really use 
anywhere near 3.7 gigs of memory. Not really close even, right? But they asked for it and they got it. That's the important thing. And when we look down here, we can see, well, we have about 3.6 available. Right, so we granted out all that. We we barely used any. As a percentage, we're <laughs> doing pretty rotten here. Uh, so, what happens if we run another one? What happens if we add another query into the mix? What happens? If we do this, and we go and we run a tenth copy of that query. What, what will happen? I wrote this demo for SQL bits. Shane was at SQL bits. Shane Shane has lots of fun stories from SQL bits. We're not going to tell those stories here, though, Shane. So with the tenth copy of this running, don't come back on. I hear that microphone clicking. You don't. You, there's. You don't. You have no defense. <laughs> with the tenth copy running, something looks different here on the screen. Everyone who works as databases knows 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 what nulls are. Everyone, everyone who works as databases is terrified of nulls. So we have a, a tenth query, and that tenth query can't run. We don't have enough memory to give that 10 query. We have hit our limit. Even though these queries haven't really used much of their memory, and they, even though they've requested a lot of memory, well, this query is out of luck. This query is sitting in a queue right here, waiting to get memory. When we ran that, it had been waiting 7.3 seconds just to get memory to start running. When queries don't, can't get memory to start running, they hit a wait called resource semaphore. If you see a lot of resource semaphore waits on your server, it means that queries are waiting to get memory to start running. That can either mean that your server does not have enough memory in general, which is normally true. Most servers that I look at are well under provision from memory. Or it could mean that your queries are just totally unhinged and untuned, right? You just, you, just, you just haven't done a darn thing to make these queries better. Or someone has. They have blamed the vendor, blamed the person who no longer works there. Lots of things, lots of lots of people to pass that off to. But if we wanted to fix this, if we wanted SQL, if we wanted SQL Server to use less memory, what would we do? Well, we have to go look at the execution plan. We have to figure out what's using memory. I'm not going to run the whole thing. I'm just going to get the estimated plan because it should be fairly obvious once we get the estimated plan what's using all that memory. We have a sort of what could it be doing? I don't know. Let's find out. So if we look at this sort operator, right? Notice that uh, there's no order by down here and there's no order by down here, but up in this row number, we have to partition by user ID and order by score. I, th I think we found the culprit of our sort. And if we look at the sort operator, we will see exactly that. Oops, didn't scroll down far enough. You know what, let me drag this up a little bit so it's not all close to the bottom of the screen there. There we go. Professional presenting 101. So we can see in this order by clause, we had to order by user ID, and we had to order by score descent. When you write a row number function, or any windowing function where you have a partition by. You can think of the partition by as sort of like a group by. It's not exactly like a group by. What it does is it sets a flag for each new group. So if there are a bunch of duplicates, we set like a flag for the start of a range. And then if like the, the next time we hit a new value, we set another flag. So it's not exactly like group by, but it's sort of like group by. And then of course, since we did partition by and then we did order by score descending, we now have to order everything by score descending with, within each group of user IDs. Got it? So we had to order by user ID, order by score. If we create an index that helps that query, order by user ID and order by score, we can make that query a lot better. So let's create this index. And uh, now I'm going to run the exact same script where I'm running 10 copies, right? I'm just going to reuse that. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at that. And I'm not going to get any information back up here. Why? Because these queries aren't asking for memory now. If I look at SP who is active, I'll see all my queries running. 
I'll see 10 copies, but ooh, that's that's slowing down. Let's <laughs> This is, this, is, this is the perils of trying to run uh, server crushing demos while you're on uh, audio, audio video conferences. And sometimes things, things get weird. But anyway, if we run running SP who is active and looking at the queries now, we don't have uh, any memory weights. All, all of our queries will have, well, they, they, will, they, they wouldn't have gotten memory because they won't have asked for memory. If we look at the query plan for this now, it runs fairly quickly. I mean, I think it was like six, seven seconds or so. Four seconds. Wow, I did better. I tuned, I tuned the crap out of that thing. But if you look at the execution plan, we no longer have that big sort operation because we put data in the order that SQL Server needed it, on user ID and score. We didn't have to physically sort that data. We saved ourselves a lot of time. We didn't ask for 3.7 gigs of memory per query, and then kind of not really use it. So pretty cool. Indexes can help you use memory better too. Uh, are there any questions on that in chat? Doesn't look like it. Sweet. That question about temp tables and table variables just lingering there. <laughs> Good times. All right. So next up is threads. Right. The other the other thing that you can run terribly out of in SQL Server and be very unhappy about. So we, we in the last query we or last last demo we ran out of memory for queries, right? And we fixed that by adding uh, an index that helped them not need memory to run or got rid of that sort. And now we're going to look at threads. So let's get rid of our indexes because we don't need them for anything anymore. Goodbye. Forever indexes. So this query is interesting to me. This query is interesting to me because uh, it's a parallel query. It's a parallel. And uh, what a lot of people don't understand about parallel queries is how threads get used in them. A lot of people think that uh, you, set de dot, you set degree of parallelism on your server. That sets the number of cores that a query can use, which is true. And a lot of people think that it sets the number of threads that a query can use too. All right? A lot of people are like, well, well, you know, if I set dot to four, then this query can only use four threads. And that's almost right. So let's run this and we'll take a look at the query plan. Now, the stuff that I'm going to show you in the query plan, this query runs pretty quickly. The stuff I'm going to show you was added around about SQL Server 2012. So if you're on 2008 or 2008 R2, which is completely out of support now, you should just upgrade anyway. Uh, you'll be able to see this in the XML. Lots of good stuff got added to the XML uh, in newer versions of SQL Server. And this is one of my favorite things. So let's go look at this cool thing that I want to show you. And that cool thing is called thread stat. So let's look at here and we can see that <clears throat> this query has three branches and 12 threads. So it's not the total number of threads per parallel query, it's the total number of threads per parallel branch. And so since this query has three branches in it, uno, dos, trace, and they can all be active at the same time, they can be concurrently active, we can have four threads per branch. So this query, uses 12 threads at dot four. This it should be dot four. If it's dot anything else, I'm gonna cry and turn off the computer. There it is. So dot four, four threads per branch. Which means, if I run this query, I can see how many worker threads SQL Server gives me when I start up, and how many queries I can run with 12 threads. Eh, so pretty, Pretty insignificant number, right? So let's say that we have 48 users of our system. If they all run or want to run that query, well, they might be all right. More than that want to run it, well, they might have a tough time. Uh, Raja says, what is the best way to avoid pools? Go to the beach instead. That's what I do. Feet in the sand, feels nice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to beat the crap out of my server. Right. I'm going to spin up 96 instances of this query just to get the job done quickly. And let's come over here and run this. And you might notice that this is going to slow down a little bit. This is not going to be the fastest query anymore. It used to be pretty quick, but now that we have to get information about a whole bunch of queries running at once, well, it's not going to be so fast. And if we run that, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes this works beautifully, other times it takes a couple tries. But if we run this query and we look at uh, what, what some of these queries might be waiting on, it's, it's going to be ugly. Right? It's going to be a not, 
not pretty thing. So now that I got my information, I'm going to kill that off and I'm going to show you some funny stuff that happens. This is the prime funny stuff, but there's funny stuff up here too. If we scroll all the way across and we look at the queries that are running, some of them are running at dot two, even though this is a dot four server, and others are running at dot one. So if we scroll down this list, we might see, oh, yep, here, here, some are running at dot four. All right, we got, got some of those. Oh, there's a two, there's a one. Right, so what SQL Server does when it starts running out of threads is it starts downgrading parallel queries. It says, I know, I know, you would really, really like to run at dot four. We can't do that right now. We, we've got a problem. We've got a thread problem. So we're going to downgrade you. Sometimes you'll get cut in half to two. Other times you'll get downgraded to a serial query. What's really, really tricky, and I would love to be able to show it to you, but getting the query plans on top of everything else is a nightmare when I run this demo. But what I would really love to show you, if I could, is that when the, when the parallel query plan still shows up, even if we're stuck at top one. So SQL Server lies to us. Now, when we run out of threads, when SQL Server has downgraded all it can, when SQL Server says I'm all docked out, well, we end up with this weight down here called thread pool. And this isn't like the worst, most glaring example of it. These queries haven't been waiting terribly long to get a thread to run on. But if I let this query, if I let this demo drag on a little bit and probably kill go-to webinar, then we would see higher and higher weights. These would stack up longer. But notice that these queries don't even have session IDs. Notice that when we look at these queries, they have not even gotten to the point with SQL Server where it's like, you have a spin. It's like, you've got nothing. You are sitting around waiting to get a thread to run on. And that's terrible. Now, I bet you can figure out what's coming next. I bet you can see this one coming a mile away. I bet you can, because we come back over here and we look at uh, that query. That was a parallel plan, right? Big, big parallel plan. Uh, question is, did you include the quick grants info script as well? Yes, I did. That is in the downloads. Uh, this is a parallel query, and it's a parallel query because SQL Server thought that it would be expensive. Well, SQL Server thinks it's expensive enough to warrant using multiple CPUs for it. If we add some indexes that help our query, say, you know, what? Guess what? SQL Server, we can we can run this query better now. Uh, we can run this query without using multiple cores. Well, notice that this query did not go parallel with some good indexes in place. All right? This thing ran at dot one. One degree of parallelism. One is not a very long one. This is still a fast query, too. This is still a, a, a quick query. And the nice thing is that since now it only takes a single thread, we can run 576 copies of it. I'm not going to do that now because I like I like staying unfuzzy and crystal clear, having crystal clear audio. But <laughs> if, if we wanted to, if, if we wanted to expend glorious effort on that, we would be able to. Now, we've come to the end of the regular demos. I'm going to show you one extra cool thing. And that's how indexes can help you use memory better. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to get rid of everything in memory. And what I'm going to show you is uh, I've, I've written a couple of views, and the views are also included in the, in, the, in the presentation materials. So what I'm going to do is show you what the indexes look like for the users table. Right now, all I've got is the primary key, clustered index, on the ID column. There are about 300,000 rows in there, and we need about 8,500 pages to, uh, to hold those 300,000 rows. I'm not making a judgment. There's no, there's no judgment on that. There's no value of judgment on that. I'm simply stating the facts. They, they, they exist in front of me. This index is 66 megs right there. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Unprofessional presenter. Right now, in memory, there might be oh, a few stragglers. If I look at what's currently in memory, yeah, there's no point to something, probably from that query I just ran, right? It makes sense. But anyway, uh, what I'm gonna do is, for, to show you how this works, I'm going to look at uh, my indexes, right? So we have that information up on the screen. I'm gonna clear the crap out of everything on the server. I'm gonna show you what's in memory. 
I'm going to run a query, and then I'm going to show you what ends up in memory afterwards. All right. So those are those are the steps I'm going to take here. This takes a few seconds to run to get everything and clear everything out. So we can see that uh, our index right here, 8,500 pages, 66.9 megs. Let's just call that 67 megs from now on. Uh, there was nothing in memory when we started. We ran our count query and we got our rows, right? We counted all the rows in the table. And then afterwards, there were 66.4 megs of data in memory, right? So we, we read all those and there were, there were two less pages, I guess, for some reason. Who knows? Who knows what happened? I don't know what happened. I can't answer every question about that. <laughs> I'm not Paul Randall. I don't know all of it, but I can show you what happens. So next, we're going we're to change things a little bit. We're only going to select some of the data, or we're only going to count some of the data. And one might think that since we're counting less of the data, we, we might be able to have less of the data in memory. We might be able to do something different, have fun in a new, fun, exciting, different way. Now, even though we only counted 410 records, we still ended up with all of that index in memory. Right? That's that's no fun. What's cool is I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this back around to show you two things. One is that if we add an index, I'm just gonna add a simple one column index on reputation to the users table. I'm gonna add that real quick. And now we're gonna look at the full count query again, right? So we're gonna look at the, the full count query. Uh, that counts every single row of the table. There's no where clause on that one. Now we see our, our new index show up here. We can see there's nothing in memory at the start. And we can see that afterwards, SQL Server was able to use that smaller index that's only four megs to count all the rows in the table. Cool, right? Because that's that's reasonable. That index has, count, has all the rows that we would need to count in it. Why not use that smaller index? Pretty sweet, right? So we can use less memory by having some smaller indexes for SQL Server to use for things. Where this gets even better, way better, is if we flip back. All right, so let's get rid of this. Oops, I hit the wrong button again. <laughs> Two demerits. I have to do 5,000 push-ups on my job. Shane's going to count. He can't really count that high. Uh, so I'm going to run this query where I'm going to filter out reputation over 100,000. That's going to that's going to count those 400 or so rows again. So now when I do this, right, I get, get, get the same index information. I get that. Oops, did I forget to highlight something? I did. I'm a terrible presenter. I should get fired. You all get your money back on this one. <laughs> so I've run this again. I was go crazy here. Now, with that filter, with that 410, to filter out people who have uh, only or filter in, rather, people who have 100,000 or more reputation, I don't need anywhere near as much data in memory. I don't need to read the, the entire thing in, and just read in the pages that I need to do a count. So the right indexes not only can help queries use less memory, right, to reduce memory grants, right, queries, right, memory that queries might need to do sorts and hashes, but with the right indexes, we can make better use of the buffer pool of the memory that we have in there. So that's the real end of the demos. Uh, are there any questions uh, uh, in general about anything? Shane, if you want to come back on and defend yourself, I suppose it's, it's fine for that. Fine time. Yeah, Shane, no, silence. We can, just hear, we can just hear Shane calling downstairs. <laughs> he drank too much water again. Poor Shane. I have nothing to defend myself against. There is a question about <laughs> there is a question about a rule to set up maximum degree of parallelism. If I yeah, that one. Uh, cool. really, there's there's so much good advice out there. Why would <laughs> um, so just take the number of cores you have in your server and cut it in half. Generally, if there's you have like extra Numa nodes, then you know the number of cores in Numa node. It's basically the same advice that you'll see anywhere on the internet about setting it up. I don't, I don't have anything new to say there. Uh, Radu says, if the larger index will ever be, oh, hey, that all disappeared on me. Um, there we go. Uh, if the larger index will ever be used later on, it will end up in memory. Yes, it will. Uh, Kevin says, thanks. Thank you for coming, Kevin. 
Uh, Satish says, do we get a recording? I don't know. Shane, what do you do with this thing? Do you put this online? For some people. All right, for some people. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shri asks, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to offend you by trying to, to pronounce the whole thing. Uh, Shri asks, what do you think about Azure Data Studio? Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I looked at it. Query plans were not good in it. And most of what I want to talk about is in query plans. So uh, it's just not for me. Uh, it might, might work for you for whatever you want to do, but it's just not for me right now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Olka uh, says, thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick great info is amazing. Thanks for the great demo. No problem, Pablo. Uh, is the filtering index will benefit the search yes uh, yes if you if you create a filtered index it can help the search too so we could create an even smaller index so we could actually go back and let's say that we uh, dropped indexes all right let's do all this thing again and we say where you uh, oops, where <laughs> review station and then equal to 100 three zeros for hundred thousand we can create an even smaller index it helps this query too. If it's the right one, go do that. Ba, ba, ba. Right. So this this index is now even smaller. This isn't going to get much smaller because we're counting everyone in there. But if we, I don't know, let's say we changed our query to be five hundred thousand, and we did this, then we could have probably less in there too. Yeah. So a little bit less. Yeah. We 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 chopped a zero off there. Right. So zero point zero seven to zero point zero seven. So yeah. Filter indexes can also help create smaller indexes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see some you know, great, some thank yous. You're welcome. Those hyperthreading count when counting cores. Gosh, I hate I hate hyperthreading. <laughs> uh, it depends a little bit on if it's a VM or not. There's a lot of weird stuff. It's a it's a, it's a physical server. Um, I try to not include hyperthreading when setting up, and I, I know that's sometimes an unpopular choice, but um, I've run into some really bad situations with uh, parallel stills, and uh, it seems like hyper-threaded cores with parallel spools that makes things way worse. Uh, but you might you might want to experiment with that to figure out what the if if, if you want to consider hyper-threaded cores when setting up. You might want. To. I've I've got weird opinions on that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, can you list how to choose index keys for a query that includes Group by and order by clauses. Uh, yes, but not right now. I'll, I'll do that in the future. I'll blog about that in the future. I promise. You know what? I have I have blogged about that. I will I will provide links to that down the line. Uh, can you show the first slide again? Yes. Uh, Mark says thanks for skipping the page leaves and crap. You're welcome. I love skipping that. It is my favorite thing to skip because uh, <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever learned anything of this from that stuff. Um, will the video and scripts be posted? Uh, yes, for some people, Shane says in his secretive voice his, his, with his Bond villain accent. <laughs> See, there you go again. Drinking too much water, laughing like a creep, covered in someone else's blood. All right, any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, all right, cool. I'm going to go then. Shane, do you have to say goodbye? Uh, I am going to say thank you, definitely. Okay. That was really amazing. I All didn't right. actually know anything about the branching and the threading. That was really something cool for me. Are you telling me that you weren't at my presentation at SQL Bits then? I unfortunately had to go and volunteer. Oh, that's right. Yes. I'll remember that. <laughs> but no, thank you very much. That was yeah. a great help. And I think everyone here enjoyed that session. To everyone watching, we will try and get the recording up as soon as we can, and we will send out an email later on with the links. So thank you again. Eric, brilliant. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Shane. Thanks for having me. And uh, I don't know. See you fine folks around. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Cool. You going to close this thing, or am I closing this thing? Uh, you know, I'll close this thing, just in case we get the recording. All right. Yeah, because I'm going to do the no hands thing. <laughs> <laughs> close it. It's getting awkward. <laughs>